Hi and welcome to week one of the six week beginner yogi course online. This week we'll be focusing on a hatha based class and before we get started I'd like to invite you to find your comfortable seat. So for me a comfortable seat is having cushioning underneath me so you could use either a blanket, a block or a cushion off the couch if you have one handy. I like to sit cross-legged, other times I will sit with my legs out in front of me, you could even have a little bend of the knees there, you could even have the feet on the floor if that's how you need to sit up at the moment. And the other option is to sit back on your heels if that's comfortable. So have a little play around, make sure that you feel comfortable enough that you could stay here for a few moments and then when you're ready gently close the eyes. So as you close the eyes just letting the breath be natural and calm and we're breathing in and out of the nostrils throughout this class. So just very gently bring awareness down into your sit bones and then see if you can feel the weight being drawn into the sit bones. As that happens, go ahead and lengthen through the back so the spine becomes nice and long and then let the shoulders just gently relax down. The back of your neck is nice and long and your chin is ever ever so slightly tucked. Your elbows are relaxed and your hands are just resting in your lap or on top of your knees. Wherever is most comfortable for you. Now allow the features of the face to relax completely. The forehead, that space between the eyebrows. The muscles around the eyes, the cheeks, the jaw, the mouth. And just to continue to breathe easily in and out through the nostrils. Now I'd like to invite you to bring your awareness down to the belly button. As you inhale without changing the breath at all, just noticing how the belly gently rises with the breath in and then gently draws back in with the breath out. Inhale, belly rises. Exhale, belly gently draws back in. Keep on going. All we're doing here is just sitting quietly, letting the breath just come and go as it needs to. Observing the breath down at the belly button. What you might notice here is that every now and again your mind gets in the way or you get distracted by some thoughts or anything like that, noises, as soon as you notice this happening, just acknowledge it. Without judging or analyzing, let it go. And then like a feather, float back down to the navel. Begin your practice again. Getting distracted isn't a bad thing. Because as soon as you notice that you've become distracted, you've become present again, so you can begin your practice again. So we need to have a little bit of patience with ourselves. And just let go of this awareness now, let it go. Breath is just easy and calm here. Taking an inhale. As you exhale, just let the chin softly drop down towards the chest. So just stretching out the back of the neck here. 
If anybody has any neck issues or any niggles and this doesn't feel nice, this next series of stretches, then just sit it out and just sit quietly, eyes closed. No worries. Inhale back to center. And as you exhale, just let the chin tilt up just a little way. Try not to crank the back of the neck. Keep the spine long, shoulders down. It's a very, very subtle stretch up the front of the neck. Inhale, center. And as you exhale, bring your right ear down towards your right shoulder. You don't have to meet the air in the shoulder. It's just a general direction. So we can get a nice stretch down that left-hand side. Inhale, center. And exhale out over to the left. Inhale, center, and exhale the breath out. Roll the shoulders up to the ears a couple of times, some nice shoulder circles. And then when you're ready, gently blink open the eyes. So we're going to be sitting here for a few more moments. So if you need to readjust your position, please feel free to do so. And then we're going to get into a stretch in the upper back and shoulder blade area to warm up. So once you've found your comfortable seat, if you needed to readjust, go ahead and bring the arms out in front of you, palms facing up, and then we're just crossing the right elbow underneath the left. So we're crossing out the elbows like an X. And then you're either going to bring the fingertips on top of the shoulders, or if you would like to, you could bring your forearms into touch. If your forearms do easily touch and you can wrap your wrists around each other and bring the palms into touch, you could do that. But if that's not happening, don't worry about it. Just come back here. So whatever's most comfortable for you. So we're just going to pause here once we've found our posture, our eagle arms posture. And I want you to close the eyes. And then go ahead and bring your awareness into the upper back and the shoulder blades, that whole area of the upper back. And this time as you inhale, draw the breath into the belly and then roll the breath up into the upper back so you can feel the shoulder blades expand as you finish your inhale. Hold briefly and then exhale the breath out. Let's do that again. Nice big inhale, draw the breath up into the upper back and exhale the breath out. Two more times inhaling. And exhale. Breathing in and out through the nostrils. Nice deep full breath in. Let the belly fill up like a balloon. Roll the breath up and let it spread across the upper back. Hold briefly. Exhale fully. And when you've taken your next exhale, just gently let the arms fall down. Maybe give the shoulders a little roll. And we'll do the other side. So extending the arms, palms facing up. This time we bring the left elbow underneath the right, or just the opposite of what you did last time. Once again, hands either come here, or forearms come into touch, or you might even wrap the wrists around each other. You find what feels good for you today. And then go ahead and close the eyes. And bring your awareness to that upper back area. So once again on this side, as we inhale, we feel the belly. Roll the breath to the upper back. Feel it spread as the shoulder blades move away from the spine. And exhale the breath out. So what we're doing as we continue to breathe in and out in our eagle arms is we are creating space in this upper back and shoulder blade area. As we create space, we're letting go of tension and stress. And the best part about it is when we're focusing on letting go of stress and tension physically, a lot of the time we also let go of it mentally as well. So you're getting a bang for your buck. One more breath here. And exhale the breath out. Gently. Let the arms lower down, maybe roll the shoulders in the opposite direction this time, so maybe forwards if you've been rolling them backwards. And then just sit quietly for a moment.
If your legs aren't extended long already, go ahead and extend them nice and long. Feet are flexed, so toes pointing upwards, and we're going to come into a spinal twist. So we're doing the right side first, so we'll step the right foot over top of the left, and then your left hand's coming out behind you, fingertips facing outwards. Bring your right elbow to the inside of the right knee, and then go ahead and lengthen the spine so you're sitting up nice and tall. As you inhale, lengthen a little bit more. And as you exhale, you're going to twist open to the left and we're twisting from that belly button area. So we're just gently opening out to the left. And you should feel this twist originate from the belly first, then maybe the chest and then maybe the shoulder. So your gaze is just looking down somewhere maybe next to the left hip area. You could look past your left shoulder, but if there's any strain in your neck at all from doing this, just shift the head back towards center a little bit. So let's take an inhale here, lengthen. And then as we exhale, we're opening a little bit deeper, getting a little deeper into the twist. And then we let the head come back to center first, and then the body just kind of follows. Let that leg down, give it a little shake out. And we'll do the left side. So bend the left knee, step the foot over the right leg, right hand out behind you this time, fingertips facing outwards. And we bring the left elbow to the inside of the left knee like we're waving. And we take an inhale length. And as you exhale, opening to the right this time. So once again, that twist originates from your belly button area. You should feel the twist there, and then maybe in the chest, and then maybe in the shoulders. Just letting the breath be natural and calm here. If you would like, you could inhale, lengthen, exhale, open. And then let the head drift back to center first, and then the body just kind of follows. Extend the legs nice and long, give them a little shake out. And just pause for a moment. Our next warm up pose is an asana called butterfly pose, and this is a hip opener. So go ahead and begin to bend the knees, and then bring the soles of the feet in towards each other, and then draw the heels in towards the sit bones. So I recommend for butterfly pose that you have a cushion or a block or a folded blanket underneath you. And what we're trying to do here by creating height underneath the sit bones is to be able to tilt the pelvis forward. So what we don't want to do is hang out in the lower back area. So you should have a nice long spine here. Now if you do give yourself some height with the cushion but you're still feeling a little bit tight through the lower back, then I recommend that you just gently move the heels a little bit away from the sit bones and then that should give you a little bit more room as well. So you just need to adjust for your body. There's no right or wrong here, just whatever works best for you. And then we bring the hands either to the ankles or around the toes, whatever feels best. And we take an inhale, nice long spine. And as you exhale, bring the torso out over the legs. Keep the chest nice and proud. And just pause wherever your body tells you to. And you'll know when to stop because the body just won't be able to go any further. You'll begin to feel very uncomfortable. And then if you would like to, you could press your elbows into your knees, maybe just get a little bit more opening through the hips. And just let the gaze be soft, looking down just in front of the toes somewhere. So we're going to bring awareness into the hips in butterfly pose. So as you inhale, I would like to see if you could flood that whole hip area with your breath. And then as you exhale, see if you can actively begin to let go of any tightness or tension there. So we're actively trying to create space within that hip area by directing our breath into the hips. Pause here for three more breaths. Last breath, nice deep full breath in, exhaling fully, and then just beginning to straighten up, gently close the knees over, and then make your way onto your hands and knees. 
So you might like to remove your cushion or your block if you've got one. If you have sensitive knees, feel free to place a blanket underneath your knees at this point while we're in tabletop position. So preparing our tabletop alignment wise, we want our hips over top of our knees, our shoulders over top of our wrists, fingers are spread nice and wide apart. Our next pose or series of poses is called cat cow and it's a flowing pose. So we're going to inhale, dip the belly, curl the tailbone and the crown of the head up. And then as we exhale, we curl the tailbone and the crown of the head under, push the mat away, draw the navel towards the spine. Inhale, curl the tailbone and the crown of the head up. This is called cow pose. And as we exhale, curl the tailbone and the crown of the head under. This is called cat pose. Continue in your own time and see whether you can let the breath lead the movement. So we're still inhaling, exhaling through the nostrils. And then begin the movement from your tailbone and like a wave roll up through to the crown of the head. Taking your time, noticing where this feels nice along the back and the spine. Finishing the round that you're on. And then come back into a neutral tabletop. And just pause here for a moment. Go ahead and sit back on your heels just for a second and then we're just going to open the knees so the knees are about at the width of the mat apart if you can, toes will be touching and then we're going to just slowly walk the hands down in front of us. So we're coming into child's pose, this will be your resting pose throughout the remainder of our classes together. So gently let the forehead rest down towards the floor. Now, if your forehead isn't easily touching the floor today, that's absolutely fine. We're either going to use stacked fists to rest our forehead on top of, or you're going to use your block if you have one handy. The main thing is that the forehead is connected to something. Now, if it's not comfortable for your hips to be down towards your heels, then you have another option. You can bring the knees to a hip width apart. Keep the hips stacked over top of the knees. Come down onto your forearms. And then once again, stack the fists and rest your forehead like so. So have a little play around for child's pose and then just get yourself comfortable. And we're going to use this resting pose just to focus in on our yogic breathing a little bit. So exhaling the breath fully. On your next inhale, draw the breath into the belly, blow the belly up like a balloon. And then roll that same breath up into the chest. One big breath. Hold briefly. And then exhale fully. Let's do that again. Nice deep full breath in. Blow the belly up like a balloon. Roll the breath up into the chest like a wave. Feel the lungs expand all the way up into the collarbones. And then slowly, as if you were letting air out of a balloon, you exhale the breath out through the nostrils. Keep it going in your own time. Nice, deep, full breath in. Long, slow exhale out. Two more in your own time here. Now once you've finished your second exhale, just gently walking the hands back towards the body, closing the knees over and sitting back on your heels or whatever comfortable seat is best for you today. Now that we're warmed up, we'll move on to our first major asana for today and that is downward facing dog. So downward facing dog in general you will find in almost every yoga class that you attend uh, apart from perhaps a yin class although it may even be included in some yin classes. So I'll just give you a quick little demo of downward facing dog. So essentially in downward facing dog we're lifting the hips as high as we possibly can and we're looking through length through the spine. So it's an upside down V and what you might notice is my knees are bent here, so we don't have to have the legs 
completely straight. In fact, it's better to have a bend in the knee so that you can tilt the tailbone higher up towards the ceiling and look for that beautiful length through the spine. So, to prepare to lift into downward facing dog, first thing I'd like you to do is to have the shoulders over top of the wrists, just like we did in our tabletop. Fingers are spread nice and wide apart. Now looking down towards your hands, I'd like you to press through your knuckles, so through this part here, and through the pads of the hands, so that you have definite connection to the mat. This is very important. When we're learning downward facing dog, we tend to kind of grip the mat a little bit, and it actually makes it harder for us. So pressing down through the fingers, through the pads of the hands, and then just go ahead and tuck the toes under, and as you inhale, press the mat away. So press the hands into the mat as if you're trying to press it away. Hover the knees, keeping the knees bent. I want you to lift the tailbone high and press your heart down towards your toes. Your head will rest comfortably between your arms. Now at any time you need to lower down into child's pose and take a little rest, please feel free to do that. Otherwise, just looking back towards your hands and make sure that the fingers are still spread nice and wide apart. So you might even lift all the fingers up, spread them evenly, and then go ahead and relax the head between the arms. And maybe you might like to pedal the heels one at a time, feeling into the backs of the legs here. Continuously pressing the mat away, grounding down through the hand, bending the knees generously, lifting the tailbone even higher, pressing the heart down towards your toes and your tummy towards your thighs. Two more breaths here. Last breath. Inhale. Exhale. And let's just gently come down onto hands and knees and then rest in child's pose. Whatever version of child's pose suited you when we did it previously. Let the forehead come to rest on either the floor, stacked fists or your block. And practice a few rounds of yogic breathing. Nice deep full breaths in. Long slow exhales out. Go ahead and slide onto your belly and just prop yourself up on your forearms for a moment. We're going to practice cobra pose. So have the feet about a hip width apart. Let the heels hang inwards and the toes face outwards. And then just gently lower the torso down and bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Let the forehead just gently rest down on the floor. And then I'd like you to see if you can bring the tops of your fingers in line with the tops of your shoulders. See how close you can get that alignment. And then go ahead and roll the shoulders down away from the ears and then hug the elbows in. So we're hugging the elbows in towards the torso. So we don't have chicken arms, but we're hugging in. And then from here, we're going to use the muscles of our back to lift us to our halfway point. So you might not know what that is until you've tried it a couple of times. But as you inhale, I'd like you to engage the muscles along the back and just see if you can lift the heart just a little way. And then as you exhale, gently lower down. Let's try that again. Inhale, engage the muscles of the back, lift a little way. And then exhale. One more time, elbows in, shoulders rolling down. As you inhale, use the muscles of the back. So if you were to pause here, lifted, heart shining forward, you may even be able to hover the hands without having to lower down because you're not relying on your hands or the strength of your arms to keep you up. And then just gently, gently bring everything down. All right, this time we're going to use the muscles of the back to lift us up, and then we're going to engage the hands and the arms. So go ahead and roll the shoulders down the back, hug the elbows in, 
And as you inhale, use the muscles of your back to come halfway. And then once you find your halfway point, press the hands into the mat, lift a little higher, just a little way. And then as you exhale, slowly lower down. In your own time, doing four more cobras, inhaling to rise, exhaling to lower, elbows in, shoulders rolling away from the ears, inhale halfway, continuing to inhale as you activate through the hands, strength through the arms, and exhale down. Keep on going until you've done your four cobras. And then once you've finished, just draw the feet together, press through the hands, lift up onto the hands and knees, and come back into child's pose, your resting pose for a moment. Let the elbows be soft. Take any variation that you need to of child's pose. Practicing your yogic breathing here. And then just take your time as you bring yourself back up into tabletop. So we're going to practice our downward facing dog again and then transition up to standing so that we can do our standing postures. So alignment wise, shoulders over top of the wrists, hips over top of the knees. Once again, fingers are spread nice and wide apart and we've got that definite connection through our hands to the mat. So we're pressing down actively through the knuckles and through the pads of the hands. Now in particular, you might even wanna press down through the first finger and the thumbs, and this just helps to ground down through the hands a little bit more. When you feel ready, tuck the toes under, and then press the mat away from you as you lift the knees. Keep the knees bent as you send the tailbone high into the air. At the same time, your head comes to rest between your arms as your heart reaches down towards your toes. So once again, you might pedal the heels up and down. And if you're feeling a little bit top heavy and downward facing dog, which is very, very common when we're learning this pose, just feel free to bend the knees deeply and then ground down through the hands, press the mat away as you aim your belly towards your thighs and then gently begin to press the heels down towards the floor. Now you can keep the knees bent, they don't have to come all the way down to the floor, but this is just helping you to transfer the weight a little bit. Three more breaths here. Nice, deep, full breaths in. Exhaling fully. end of your next exhale look forward bend the knees and then tiptoe up to the top of your mat so the feet are a hip width apart here our knees are bent and we're kind of just hanging upside down in our forward fold so keep the knees as bent as you can and then see if you can rest your belly either on top of the thighs or as close to the thighs as possible we're tilting the tailbone up towards the ceiling and just letting the head neck shoulders fingers just relax here hanging upside down if you would like you could take opposite hands to opposite elbows this is called ragdoll then you could even sway from side to side a little bit if you like so child's pose downward facing dog and forward folds are all what i call anti-anxiety poses so these are great poses to come down into or stand into for about eight deep breaths in and out. Just to help calm down, internalize a little bit, get out of the mind for a little while. And if you've taken hold of the elbows, just gently release fingers down to the floor. 
Ground down through the feet and then begin to tuck the tailbone as you slowly uncurl up to standing. Let the head be last. And then just lift the head up. Roll the shoulders a couple of times. And just pause for a few beats here. Our first standing posture is in the warrior series and we'll be practicing warrior one. So just have the knees nice and soft here. And then go ahead and step the right foot back. And we wanna have the right heel in and the right toes angling outwards. There's a bend in the left knee. So the knee is directly over top of the ankle here. And in warrior one, we wanna have the hips facing forward. So what we need to do here is just place your fingertips in that little hip crease area and gently encourage the left hip back, right hip forward. Now, if when you do this, you can feel that twist in the right knee, what I want you to do is look down towards your right toes and then step the right toes more towards the edge of your mat. So what you're doing is you're giving yourself more space. And then see if you can gently encourage that right hip forward a little bit more. So your hips should be shining forwards. So we once again, just check out that nice straight line from the right knee to the right ankle. And we don't wanna have the knee knocking inward. We wanna gently squeeze the left knee back. So when you look down, you should be able to see your big toe, but your other toes are almost hidden there. So from here, I'd like you to lengthen the tailbone down, maybe gently draw the belly in towards the spine, and then we'll add in the arms. So as we inhale, we sweep the arms up overhead. And as we exhale, just let the shoulders relax. Gaze is soft. So we're pressing into that left foot, activating the left thigh. And then we're also pressing into the outside of the back foot, the outside of the right foot. So both legs are active here in our warrior one. For any time your arms become sore or they, it feels uncomfortable, you can always bring the arms down for a little rest and then lift the arms back up when you're ready. Few more breaths here. And then we're just going to bring the arms down, lift that back heel and step back to the top of your mat. Maybe give it a little shake out and we'll do the other side. So just soften the knees and then take a gentle step back with that left foot. So once again, we wanna have the heel facing inwards and the toes facing out towards the left edge of the mat, just a little way. And then we wanna take a nice deep bend into that right knee, so the knees directly over top of the ankle. And remember, we're squeezing the right thigh back. So we're squeezing this side, of the, this side of the thigh towards the right edge of the mat so that our knee's not dropping inwards. Place your hands on your hips, maybe in that little hip crease area. And this time we're encouraging the right hip back, left hip forward. Pressing into the outside of that left foot. So both legs feel active. And we're gonna lengthen the tailbone down. Gently draw the navel in towards the spine. And when you're ready, Take an inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Keep your shoulders nice and soft, your gaze relaxed. Breathing in and out through the nostrils. You might like to find a dristy, a point of focus, somewhere where your eyes are just naturally drawn to while you stay in your warrior one pose. Few more breaths here. And we're just going to lower the arms down, lift the back heel, and step back to the top of the mat. Well done, shake it out. From warrior one, we're moving on to high lunge pose. And it's much the same as warrior one, but the slight difference is that we keep the back heel lifted. So soften the knees, you can place your hands on your hips if you would like to, and then take a step back with that right foot. So this time around, the back heel stays up, toes pointing forward. 
So we have that nice deep bend in that left knee, just like we do in Warrior One. The knee is directly over top of the ankle, and that back knee can be bent as well. So we need to stabilize here in our high lunge pose. If you're feeling a little bit wobbly, don't stress up too much. We'll see if we can correct that now. So I want you to press through that front foot so it's fit, you're feeling grounded through the left foot and then press into the ball of the right foot as well. Now from here, lengthen the tailbone down towards the floor. See if you can draw that left hip back, right hip forward, squeeze the belly button, and then go ahead and squeeze the inner thighs in towards each other. So this should help to anchor you. When you're ready, take an inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Soft shoulders, soft gaze. Pausing here in your high lunge pose. Couple more breaths here. And then we lower the arms down and step the back foot forward, give it a little shake out. So obviously our warrior poses and our high lunge are strengthening poses. You'll probably feel this through the legs. So let's do the left side now. So keep the knees a little bit soft and then just carefully stepping that left foot back. A little bit further back than you might think you need to. And then go ahead and straighten that line from the knee down to the ankle. And then see if you can ground down through the ball of the back foot. Remember, you can have a bend in that back knee if you need to. And then we're lengthening the tailbone down, drawing the belly back towards the spine. So we've got nice activated core here. And then we gently encourage the right hip back, left hip forward, and we squeeze the inner thighs in towards each other. So here we have our anchor. When you're ready, bringing the arms in. Soft shoulders, soft gaze. Finding your dristy, your point of focus. Keeping actively, keep on squeezing the inner thighs in towards each other, pressing through the front foot and the ball of the back foot. Last breath here, lower the arms down, hands to hips maybe, and step back up to the top of the mat, walk it out, and then just relax, eyes closed, just taking a few quiet breaths in and out here. Gently blink, open the eyes. Before we go back down onto the mat for our winding down and our relaxation, we're going to practice a balancing pose called tree pose. So I want you to bring the toes together and just have a tiny bit of space between your heels. And then go ahead and lift all of your toes up, so even the pinky toes. And then from the pinky into the big toe, just gently fan the toes down. Rock forward slightly, lift the heels just a little way, and then slowly bring the heels down. From here, I'd like you to close the eyes. Let your awareness travel up to the kneecaps. And then as it continues to travel up, lengthen the tailbone down. You'll feel the front of the hips lift. Slightly draw the navel back towards the spine just a little way. And then grow nice and tall through the spine. Roll the shoulders up and then back down. Open your palms to face forward, a little bit away from the body, and then lengthen the back of the neck, chin is ever so slightly tucked. Crown of the head is reaching up towards the heavens. And just breathe naturally and calmly here. This is called Tadasana pose, mountain pose. And I like to bring people into this pose before we come into balancing poses. Just to show you that balancing isn't actually about being still, it's being able to find your center again and again. So as you stand in mountain pose, you might begin to sway just very, very gently from side to side, maybe forwards, backwards. And what you'll notice is, even with this movement, 
pretty easily you're able to find your center, you self-correct. So this is what we're looking for in our balancing pose today, just self-correction, finding center, even if we're a little bit wobbly. So if you've found yourself swaying from side to side or back to front, just gently find stillness. Blink open the eyes. And then bring your palms together and gently press your thumbs against your chest. Standing nice and tall. Shift the weight into the left foot and then bring your right foot either a little kickstand at the inside of the ankle or if you like, you could bring your sole of your foot to your inner calf. You choose whatever feels best for you today. And then, as I said, just gently finding center again and again. Go ahead and find a dristy, a point of focus somewhere in front of you, maybe on the floor, on the mat, something that's not moving, a little bit of fluff on the carpet or a little grain in the wood, something that just helps you to stay focused. If you would like to at any time, you could take an inhale and raise the arms up overhead. Exhale as you open the palms, let the shoulders relax. Gently pressing that right knee open. Couple more breaths here. And we gently bring palms together. Draw them back down to heart center and relax the foot down, walk it out. All right, let's come back through Tadasana to prepare to ground ourselves. We lift all the toes, lift the heels. Go ahead and lift the kneecaps, lengthen the tailbone down, front of the hips will lift. Grow nice and tall, roll the shoulders up and down, palms facing forward, neck is nice and long. Just finding a comfortable gaze, wherever your eyes just naturally rest here and let that be your dristi, your point of focus. So without losing that dristi, bring your hands into heart center, shift the weight into the right foot and then bring your inside of the left foot, either a little kickstand at the ankle or if you like, you could lift it to the inner calf. Just make sure that you're not bringing it over the knee joint, so either the ankle or the calf. Find your dristi, easy breaths in and out here. At any time you would like to, you could add in the arms with an inhale up overhead and exhale, open palms, soft shoulders, soft gaze. Looking for center. Self-correcting whenever you need to. And gently close the palms, bring the hands back down and release the foot. Release the hands back into your Tadasana and just pause here for a few beats. Make your way back to the top of your mat, feet are hip width apart and just have the knees a little bit soft here. As you take an inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. As you exhale, bend the knees, chin to chest, and just kind of forward fold down. Take it nice and easy. Placing your hands on either side of the feet, we're going to step into downward facing dog just for a moment. We're using this as a transition to get back down onto the mat. So go ahead and look at your fingers. Make sure that the fingers are spread nice and wide apart, and you're pressing down through the knuckles and the pads of the hands. Maybe press down through the index finger and the thumbs just to ground down. And then go ahead and bend the knees. As you inhale, press the mat away. Hike the tailbone as high as you can. And then just gently reach the heels down a little way. Remember, they don't have to touch the floor. Give the head a little shake. Head is resting comfortably between the arms. One more breath here. And then go ahead and lower the knees down to the mat and come into child's pose. So whatever variation of child's pose works for you, remember you can keep the hips stacked over top of the knees and rest your forehead on top of stacked hands if you need to.
practicing your yogic breathing here for a few beats. Nice deep full breath into the belly. Roll the breath up into the chest. One big breath. And exhaling fully. Three more breaths like this. Seeing if you can make your exhales twice as long as your inhales. Slowly letting the breath out as if you were slowly letting air out of a balloon. However you need to get there, make your way down onto your back and hug your knees into your chest. If you would like to, you could take a little roll from side to side, just finding a sweet spot to massage in that lower back area. Taking some nice deep full breaths in and out. And as we begin to wind down, we're going to take a spinal twist. So if you would like a more subtle spinal twist, you bring your feet down to the floor and just have the heels somewhere around close to the sit bones. If you would like a more intense spinal twist, or you don't, if you don't have any lower back niggles or anything like that, then you could keep your knees into your chest. So you decide what feels best for you today. And then we're going to take the arms out nice and wide and bring our palms facing downwards. Taking an inhale here. And as you exhale, just slowly let the knees drop over to the right. And then we're going to turn our gaze out over to the left. Close the eyes. Go ahead and just engage the core here by drawing the belly button back towards the spine and then on your inhale come back through center. And as you exhale let the knees just slowly drop over to the left and this time turn your gaze out over to the right. Easy breaths in and out here. Go ahead and squeeze the belly button back towards the spine. Bring the knees back to center. Give them a little hug. Pause here for a few breaths. Go ahead and lower the feet back down to the floor. And we're going to do another variation of butterfly pose. So a little hip opener before we come into our final Shavasana, our resting pose. So just bring the feet into touch and then let the soles of the feet come together, knees drop open. And then you can choose what you do with your arms here. You could either have the arms a little bit away from the body, palms facing upwards. You could bring one hand to your navel, the other hand to your chest, just resting it over your heart. Or you could even bring the arms overhead, taking opposite hands to opposite elbows. So just have a little play around, see what feels best for you. And then go ahead and close the eyes. Back of the neck is nice and long, chin is slightly tucked. And your choice here, you could just let the breath come and go as it needs to. Or you might practice your yogic breathing. If you are practicing your yogic breathing, we're taking nice deep full breaths into the belly. Rolling that same breath up into the chest, filling up the lungs. Holding briefly. And then super slow exhale out. Beginning the inhale whenever you're ready. Making your exhale twice as long. Keep on going with whatever breath you decide feels best for you right now.
five more breaths here. And you're just going to gently let your hands push the knees back together. Just pause for a moment with the soles of the feet on the floor just to let everything realign. And we'll move into our final pose, our Shavasana. So there's a couple of different options here for Shavasana today. If you have a sensitive lower back, then I recommend having the knees dropping in and then walking the feet out to the edges of the mat for a little bit of support. If you don't have any worries with your lower back, then we're just going to extend the legs nice and long. Have the feet about the width of the mat apart, toes hanging outwards. And we're just going to lift the chest, bring the shoulder blades down, arms a little bit away from the body, palms facing upwards, neck is long, chin is slightly tucked. Feel free to use a pillow underneath the head if this makes it feel better for you. And just take a nice deep full breath into the belly. Exhale as you let the body begin to soften into the mat. Eyes and mouth are closed. Breath is just natural and spontaneous now. Every exhale, the body feels a little bit heavier. Relaxing all those heavy parts of the body. With every exhale, relaxing through the back of the head, the shoulders, the spine, the hips, your heels. Every exhale, just feeling the body just melting back into the mat feeling weightless and heavy all at the same time. Begin to deepen your breath. Nice deep full breaths into the belly, rolling the breath up into the chest. Exhaling fully. A couple more rounds of this yogic breathing. Beginning to wiggle through your fingers, your toes. And then maybe reaching the arms up overhead, taking a full body stretch. And bringing your arms back down by your side, bending your knees, and then just softly turning over onto your right side. You can use your underarm as a pillow. And just pause here for a moment. And keeping your eyes closed if you can, gently press yourself up into a comfortable seat. Feel free to use your cushion or block folded blanket if you need to. Once you've found your comfortable seat, just close the eyes over if they're not already. 
And we'll just spend the last few moments just sitting quietly. So go ahead and shift the weight back into the sit bones, lengthening through the spine, shoulders rolling down. Back of the neck is nice and long, chin is ever so slightly tucked. Elbows are soft, fingers are relaxed. As you exhale, softening the features of the face. And then let your awareness just gently float down to the navel. Beginning to observe as you inhale, belly gently rises. And as you exhale, belly gently draws back in. Not trying to control the breath, just allowing it to come and go. And just watching. Anytime you feel distracted, notice that you've gone up into the head like a feather. Just gently float your awareness back down to the navel. Bring your palms together and lightly press your thumbs against heart center. Bring your chin to your chest and give yourself a big smile for your practice today. A big smile for learning something new, for trying something new. And to end our practice, we lift our thumbs to our forehead. We bow together and say to one another, Namaste. Well done.